Hello and welcome to Nimbus Reviews. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. How did you? This is all insane, and everyone who watches it is insane. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, your opinion doesn't matter because what I see goes. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, also joining us is Twilight Genesis. G'day. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Until I had to rewatch this episode. <laughs> oh. What? No big fan. Not at all. If you guys at home are wondering what we're talking about, well, uh, we're going to review Season 7, Episode 9, Honest Apples. When Rarity asks Applejack to be a judge in a fashion show, Applejack learns that an opinion, however honest, can still be hurtful. Yay, you don't say Applejack. Yeah. Uh, so, let's go into first impressions first. And you know what? I'm going to flip the table a bit and... Why? What do you think of this episode, man? Oh, where do I start? It, Applejack's episodes don't have a history of being the best, but I think this is one of the worst displays of Applejack we have had. She's known for creating her own problems that she has to fix, but I have to give them credit that they used her what is meant to be her primary positive aspect, her honesty. They're using it against her to create a problem. That was very clever, but it was so painful to watch (laughs) because of how daft Applejack has to be for it to work. Alrighty then. And what about you, Silver? Sigh. (laughs) The the sad thing is I know know there are quite a few reviewers out there who would take these attitudes that Applejack has. It doesn't make sense to them. Ergo, it must not make sense to anyone. Or, this is stupid, and you're stupid for liking it. That is always a disappointment to see. So, absolutes, then, like, not good. Absolutes are not good. Recognizing your view of the world is not the the view of the world is also important. But basically, this whole thing starts with a contrivance, uh, Rarity's very questionable logic, followed by uh, some very self-aware things and how, how did I describe this? I've actually talked to people who are big into fashion after this episode, and we'll get into that in the main piece, but uh, Applecheck really was just the worst possible choice for this all around, especially in terms of practicality. And so this seems doomed on arrival, but there is there are saving jokes and graces, and though Applejack hits at an all-time low, she also digs herself out. So I won't say it's it's irredeemable, but I also like... It didn't need to happen. Uh, All right, then. As for me, this episode was one of those cringe episodes. Like, uh, you would think that hard to say anything was one of those episodes that I would say like, oh my god, this is so cringe, I can't watch this episode. Nah, man. Like, nah. This episode here, um, Honest Apples, is one of those episodes where you have to question stuff like, Applejack, why? Applejack, no. Applejack, please stop. Applejack, no! This is... Applejack, yes. <laughs> uh, but still, I like the premise. The premise is such a good one. The execution was... I, I don't know if I can say it's bad. It's interesting to see the least. I, I like what you said, Twy, where you take the best out of Applejack and you twist it with a knife. <laughs> and you'll get this episode. And, well, I do like the lesson where, you know what, it's in the meat of the story, so we'll get into that later. I hope I do remember that. But anywho, um, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, I do highly recommend go watching it because it's an experience. And welcome back. So, how do I even want to start this? Um, we start off with Rarity putting up posters for, uh, flyers for her contest, was it? Or just a show? I I don't really get this part. I think she really has the contestant, right? A little column A and a little column B. It is a contest, but it's also just a fa- fashion show. She promotes uh, Cantula, uh no Carousel Boutique, and she opens the door for several talented uh, fashion designers. And well, the the amount of people applying was so little. Like there's only three. I would have thought that probably five or six would be there but you know what uh, because of time limit yeah yeah probably limited space 
True. So um, she puts up flyers with the help of Spike, and she reveals to Pinkie Pie that hey, uh, I have the perfect um judge for this contest. I got Hoity Toity photo finish, and also the mysterious guest judge Applejack. And everybody's going, what? Why Applejack? Applejack's not good at fashion. And Rarity reveals that um, Applejack's practicality is key for this judge because we all here are fashion designers. We can sometimes miss the practical things in life. And well, it does sound logical here, but when we get into the part where things happen... Uh, that practicality is thrown out the window. <laughs> yeah. It goes out the window hard. Mm-hmm. But I find funny is even, even Applejack is just like, this is a terrible idea. And Pinkie Pie says this is a bad idea. Is When Pinkie Pie is questioning the logic of your choices, you know you're done goofed. Indeed. Like, I can't even blame Applejack for this. Like, rarity, what the hell are you thinking? Absolute insanity. Indeed. Indeed. But still, um, Applejack thinks about it, and while thinking about it on the farm, um, she does a lot of apple bucking and helps Apple Bloom with her hat, which kind of is strange in the sense where Apple Bloom is trying to have her own icon, like a hat and ribbon kind of combo, but nah, like, just the hat would work. Just the hat would work. Although, let's, let's be honest, oversized hat on cute little filly it equals adorable. Yeah, especially the Stetson that she has on now. Like, I don't think there's a ribbon anymore. So, yeah, it works, it works. I don't really yeah. have much to say. No, I, I think, I think he's, he, Twilight is building up his, his rage uh, for when we get to Applejack's true impracticality. Yeah. But still, um, I, I have to point out that after helping Apple Bloom with her head problem, she goes up to Rarity and says, I'll take the job, and walks in hoity-toity and photo finish. Oh, and it's good to see these two again, especially photo finish. Yeah, we, we need more photo. The rainbow recolor also, if you take a look at one scene way back in season one, she has the twilight cutie mark. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is a rainbow recolor? Yeah, kind there. of, if you take a look-see. Like, She's a recolor of rainbow with different mean and stuff like yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm not seeing it. Which which scene is this where where photo finish enters? Probably just all of it, like her tone. But this could be season one thing I'm thinking of. But yeah, whatever. Okay, well either way, yeah. either way. But anywho, it's, it's but... revealed that um day two uh, was from what Manhattan was it or Manhattan? Yeah, they were Manhattan. They were at Manhattan or was it Cantaloupe? I forgot, but. The point of the matter is, they saw Coco Pomel, or Miss Pomel, at their show with her costume design or fashion design, and they show it to Applejack, who says that, uh, why is that pony wearing a disco ball? That's really impractical. It doesn't help that they, uh, it is a disco ball. I mean, how do you even walk in that thing? True, true. But here's the thing where I have to put a pause on the discussion for a bit and to bring up something practical where fashion sometimes doesn't need to make sense sometimes. Where if you take sometimes. true, where if you take a look see at the walk uh, the catwalks, sometimes people wear outlandish shirts and you'll think to yourself are they going to wear that in real life? Like, when are they going to wear that in real life at all? Well, they're not. This is this is something I talked about with folks, even just in the Equestria Daily forums uh, after the episode air. There is the question of practicality. And the thing about fashion shows, a good number of them, is that they are not meant to be worn every day. In fact, they, you probably wouldn't wear them for any event. They're meant to be outlandish and hyper stylized because it gets to show, uh, the designer's full creativity in their own statement. And that in turn, hopefully draws people to look to them to design a new, more practical fashion line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the, so here's Rarity 
asking Applejack to judge a, a fashion line based on practicality when fashion is by its nature at these things meant to be impractical. And well, could you blame Applejack for what will happen soon enough? But still, um, we'll get into that soon enough. So after Applejack reveals how stupid this is, or how stupid the dress is, photo finish faints, and we go to the next scene where they introduce the contestants. Before we jump into that, can I just say that there are two photo finish things I love. Mm-hmm. One, I faint! <laughs> Announcement of fainting, yes. And it's just like, you know, photo finish. Never change, except you already have, because you revealed your eye color. Ah, yes. She actually took off the glasses, and I don't know if there was as heated a debate as there was with vinyl scratch in her eye color. Nah, like, I, I don't think so. Like, photo finish was never a uh, talking point. She was memorable, but not really that high of a... Uh, Discussion point. Yeah, she was remembered for the way she spoke, less so than her design. Mm -hmm. And what's the other thing, Silver? Well, that was it. Uh, The eye color and I faint! (laughs) All right, you know, all right, you know. I I do enjoy that Rarity says that this happens all the time and her assistant nods her head (laughs) and and then uh, coyly walks away after getting a sort of look from a... The proto finish. Yeah, that was cool. That and was the cool. one good thing that Applejack does this episode on her own free, uh, her own volition being that one joke about rolling the, the costumes pony down the runway. <laughs> I enjoyed that my first watching. Uh-uh. I actually got a, a giggle out of that joke. <laughs> but that was the last time that she impressed me this episode. Oh wow. Alrighty. Applejack goes downhill from here. <laughs> In the disco ball of downhillness. <sighs> well, anywho, we are then introduced to the contestants, Lily Lace, Starstreak, and also Inky Rose. Which our, our friend Ink Rose may be proud or confused by that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, still, uh, our contestants here have three different designs. One is a very galish or very colorful design the other one is very futuristic and the other one is very goth like very black black as the night like batman would really love that design i only wear black and sometimes very dark gray (laughs) yeah so with that all the judges take a look see at the contestant and take a look at the contestant and comment on what they do and applejack starts to open her mouth (sighs) Let the roller coaster begin. Yeah, um, Applejack. Although I do find it funny, you know, if I go into like a hot topic, I'm instantly the most countercultural guy in the room <laughs> because I look because I look nothing like I belong in hot topic. Yeah, but still, but still. Oh God, wait, wait. Can I start? Where should we start? Okay, uh, right out of the back, Applejack. You thrown yourself into the lion's den and you poke the lion really, really hard. The thing is. What she say is kind of true, but at the same time, too, time and a place. And again, recognizing this is not meant to be practical. It is a fashion show. It is an art display. Honestly, the more we're doing this, the more I'm thinking, this is this was a really bad idea, Rarity. Rarity, what you do to me? Yeah, but still, um, with that, Apple Jack things like she did well. And yeah, nah, man, like, nah. See... I, I'm thinking about when Rarity did the their dress for the gala in season one. I was thinking like, Applejack, why did you chew Rarity out on the design for Twilight's costume or Pinkie Pie's costume or even your own costume and whatnot? So yeah, what, what can we do? What can we do? As the day ends, Applejack goes to Pinkie or Applejack walks to the farm and Pinkie stops. Applejack saying, how did it go? And says, yeah, um, I'm pre- I'm doing well. Like, I'm glad I was there. If not, they would have done stupid things in their costumes or in their uh, fashion show. <laughs> Yeehaw, I'm glad I was there. And Rarity comes along and says, like, I don't know. I feel dead inside. I need to play music. At which point we get the greatest moment of the entire episode. 
Yep. You are not worthy to handle this much metal. <laughs> I, I don't. There's a great line that DWK did in his, I won't say review, but in his uh, retelling of the... Legit recap. Yeah, yeah, in his um, show recap, whatever it is. And yeah, he brought up a few things with the acoustic guitar playing pedal song, yeah, whatever it is. Like, go watch it just to find out that joke, but I do agree with him. <laughs> I think it's something along the lines of the guitar that Rarity plays has two strings, and the riff <laughs> she plays is like a six-string guitar riff. Yeah, not to mention that it's acoustic guitar. Well, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to even mention it. But still, you guys should watch it. It's really fun. Meanwhile, I'm just envisioning the band of Death Clock staring off the side going, Oh, dude, that's totally my pony. <laughs> uh, North Nations, she is my ponies. <laughs> I just uh, want a question where all the people who usually deride the, uh, the guitars and equestrian girls going, they shouldn't sound like that because they're not plugged into any amps. <laughs> Where have you all been when when we get that sort of sound out of an acoustic guitar? <laughs> I don't care if it's a magic land. There should have been something going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Uh, let's carry on with day two then. Oh, day two, the reckoning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's say that Inky Rose um, costume design is wonderful. I like the design really, really well. It looks... Really, Matrix is. For a moment, I thought you were talking about the design of Inky Rose herself. I don't know. Her... And not the, uh, the clothes she was making. I don't know. The clothes. I like her design as a pony. She gives the kind of, uh, fashionista Wednesday Adams kind of look. Uh, that too, that too. But I'm just talking about her design before Applejack asked her to butcher it. Like, that, yeah, with all the buttons. Like, you know what? I, if I was younger, I would have bought that and wore it. That was cool. I probably would have to. <laughs> I, I do like my buttons that don't mean anything. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, folks, button-up jeans. I... They're the single most impractical thing in the entire world. You could have gone out and bought a zipper pair of jeans at the time it takes just to buckle up the fly. Oh, true that. And just imagine if you need to go to the bathroom. like. <laughs> As someone who once owned a pair of uh, button-up jeans, it is not fun. It is not fast. <laughs> and was anyone like, oh, you got those cool button-up jeans? Uh, oh, no, 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 not at all. I think most people were like, we didn't know button-up jeans were a thing. Oh, they were. Of they course, were. until I had a pair, of, neither did I. And I, I'm pretty sure button-up jeans is just is a dead idea now. I don't think they get made. Yeah. And for the better, I believe. Yeah, I'm true that. But... Inky Rose uh, fashion design here is cool. I do like it. And Applejack had to push it. Like, yeah, you need to wake up an hour early just to button up everything. Applejack, you don't need to button up everything. It's just a fashion... Uh, uh. <laughs> I love the slow rage that is building within everyone. We haven't even gotten to Applejack's most detestable action yet. Uh Oh yes, that's the next one. Yep. And, oh my. Let's go for the oh, next one then. Like I, 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 I was hoping the Big Mac would would, would buck, uh, what the feather bangs in the face <laughs> in the last episode. You just, this is so much worse. <laughs> you can imagine what kind, what kinds of uh, uh, wrath I would, I would have rained down upon Applejack in this moment if I had the power. <laughs> and well, here, here's the thing. Um. Lily Lace mentioned that she stitched the feathers by hoof for hours. And you can tell that by her bangs under her eyes. Like, she did a lot of work to manage this. Like, oh my, that's some dedication to your art. But nah. <laughs> and Applejack just destroys it. It's like, mm, let me taste your tears. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just, yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, oh, well, actually, I can odd parallel. My, my fav, one of my favorite reviewers, SF Debris, he went after, uh, he concluded reviewing Paranoia Agent recently. Mm -hmm. It's an anime. In that anime, what an animator is has spent all night working on uh, a background, and it it needs to be transported to be you know added to the show. And this idiot production assistant folds up the artwork oh. and 
and tucks it under his sleeve. Now the the anime the artist who did this is just sort of spasmodically staring, horrified, and the uh, producer does a flying tackle and starts pummeling this idiot mm-hmm. for destroying this guy's hard work. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's what needed to happen here. Applejack needed a flying tackle. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, usually I am not into pony violence, but this, this here, even Fluttershy, if she was in here, she would have spasm, like, no, why, no, those poor birds, like, no. What really dumbfounds me is that nobody, not, none of the judges, nor Rarity, or even if the, any of the contestants speak up a, about Applejack's behavior, especially at this point. You would think someone would go, hey, that's not right. That's just plain rude, if not worse. But nobody says anything. They just let her continue her little practicality rampage. What does... Yeah, I don't know. I mean... uh, I'm on a rampage. This is one of those things where logic's out the window. But still, okay, let's go to our final contestant. And, okay, this one I'm confused. I kind of confused. <laughs> uh, I can agree with Applejack on this one, but to a point where, okay, um, photo finish said that he needed something, and she introduced a belt. Toity Toity says that the belt that photo finish threw at him is much better. And the thing is, they're the same. There's no difference in design from what I can see here, and. Applejack points it out that, hey, um, you guys are arguing over something silly. Those two belts are the same. There's no difference in them. And from this point on, she blows up saying that what you're doing is kind of silly and dumb. Like, there's no practicality in this. And with that, Hoity Toity and Photo Finish felt insulted by this and they leave. With them leaving... The contestant here says, you know what, if they're not in, we're not in. There's no point. So they leave. Uh, Rarity kind of runs off trying to salvage whatever she can, but ends up feeling and, well, felt hurt by all of this. Applejack says, like, what's the matter? I'm just being honest and, well, stuff, like, whatever I say is golden. I say this is also what what frustrates me because I see this in re- with reviewers. Oh, I'm just stating my opinion. Yeah, but you you didn't do a good. You didn't put any effort in crafting a message. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there's a lot of those kind of reviewers back in the days, and I'm not hundred percent sure now because I don't watch reviews that much. But still, one of the things where on this show that we do here is we try to be open minded in storytelling. We look at things, we decide how to approach it, and we go for broke. We never say that our opinion is correct. We never say that our opinion should be the way that the show is should be run. We do give ideas, but we take things at face value. Isn't that right, Silver? We were supposed to consider other opinions. Oh, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> yeah, thanks for putting me on the spot, man. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, but still, but still, uh, let's see. Uh, with that, Rar- Rarity kind of have an evil idea and introduce her to... Strawberry Sunrise or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, something like that, yes. Mm. Let, let's call her Me- Meanie McTart. <laughs> Meanie McTart, yes. Yeah, Strawberry Sunrise. I have the the episode up on my computer. <laughs> All right, then. So, anywho, um, Rarity introduced Applejack to Strawberry Sunrise. And wow, is this <laughs> this character here? Woo, you thought that I love her. She's fantastic. She's the best character in the whole episode. Uh, She's the know. favorite She's part so... of the whole episode. She's so mean. Yeah. I know it's great. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, what can I say? It's a taste of Applejack's own medicine. Hmm. A taste of Applejack's own medicine, but. Uh... How to describe it? You have a pony. Well, then again, Applejack provoked that response. At first, she was uh, she was just like, "Oh, I like strawberries more," mm-hmm. and Applejack couldn't let that rest. Mm-hmm. So she, in some ways, she invited that upon herself. But now I'm I'm eagerly awaiting 
jump a little ahead to Perfect Pear. I just want to find out that there's some a strawberry farming clan somewhere in Applejack's lineage, <laughs> and that she and she is Strawberry Surprise or Sunrise or what have you uh, are really distant cousins. Dun dun dun! Oh, they have heavy problems there. <laughs> But uh not hundred percent sure on how the Applejack lineage goes. But still, um Applejack gets a taste of her own honest opinions, uh honest medicine. And now she understands what she put the designers through. So with that, she goes chasing down photo finish and hoity toity, asking them to go back to the show and also uh, Hulk ties the contestant and, well, explains that she's a big jerk and she's sorry. And they all agree to continue on with their work and go on with the fashion show. After she unties them. Yes, indeed. You had Big Mac last episode uh, violating personal space, to say the least. Mm-hmm. And now uh, this is uh, abduction, assault, and unlawful imprisonment. The Apple family better have a really good lawyer. Well, they are best friends with the princess. I don't know if that gives you diplomatic immunity. <laughs> I'm sure that they have it cool. She is the element of honesty. She's She honestly says, you can't touch me, I'm friends with the princess. Ay-yeehaw. Right, Twilight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but still, but still. Yeah. Once um, everything goes back on track, it seems that, well, she is helping the designers on their outfit. And I think this is kind of the redemption arc that she kind of needs. She works through the, um, what you want to call this? Um, she works with the designers to create their outfit. So she knows the, what you want to call this, burden or hard work that's been put into designing a outfit. She recognizes hard work. She recognizes, you know... Just because you don't get something doesn't mean it doesn't have value to someone else. But this is where Applejack turns it around for me, at least a little. Especially when she's able to hoist a, a light that several construction stallions couldn't match. True that. Well, actually, they needed to hoist it down. So they needed to be really, really careful not to break the lamp. Well, being careful, but at the same time, what you'd think... It's harder to lift something up than pull it down. True of life. True, but it's one of those things where you need to be very careful. If you break it, you buy it. It's coming out of your paycheck. You break it, you bought it. Uh, but still, we go through the whole designers. Um, Applejack picking something for Inky Rose, um, helping test out the dress for the lilies, and also fixing the problem with the sewing machine with... Whose pony name is that? Uh, Star Spangle Banner thingy. What's his name? Star Spangle Banner and the rocket's red flag. <laughs> okay, Star Streak. Yes, okay, Star Streak. Uh, Applejack burst in the air. <laughs> and that was payback <laughs> because she was not fair. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, anywho, uh, once Rarity comes back with Pinkie Pie... She's surprised by everyone being there because I thought this was ending. Nope. Fashion show's going. Now we take photos. Now we do show. The contestant comes up on stage with their dress design and whatnot. And it seems that it's a huge success. And everybody gets one point from the judges and Applejack is a tiebreaker. Although, uh, I will say this. Inky Rose, her, the model she chose, looks like most models I've seen. We always have this look of... I'm fashionable and pretty, but I'm sad. <laughs> uh, yes. But still, that first cloak with the many buttons thing, it works. It works so good. Well, I wouldn't want to wear it, but... It looks like something a SNK game would wear. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, this is what they did to Final Fantasy. More buttons and black everywhere. Yeah, with belts that and doesn't make sense. Again, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, Twilight, what'd you say? Belt. We can't forget belt. Just one? Lulu Let's have ten. Final Fantasy ten. Oh, belt so Lulu doesn't... wore enough belts to cover the rest of the car. Ah, belt that doesn't make sense. Yeah, we need that. Like, we need that in our ponies now. <laughs> uh, we get a movie for that. Let's hope we get belts. Yay. 
We will make the belt movie in Australia. We already made a movie about a sentient uh, Robert Tyre. <laughs> Wait, this is so Australia? Really? Belt. Yes. Oh, Pretty sure Robert's Australian. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Back on track. Um, like I said uh, Applejack is the tiebreaker. And, well, I don't 100% know if they decided who won. But Applejack says that they all deserve to win. And she learned her lesson uh, and stuff. No, I'm sorry. I have to be very firm on this. I can't stand it when the show ducks out of, uh, ducks out of making a choice on who won. It's okay to do your best to have a spirited competition and to not win. We've become so afraid of the term lose that now we're afraid to have anyone actually lose. It's okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, isn't one of the greatest tests to accept defeat with humility and even more so accept victory with with even greater humility? True Just that. thank someone for being a, such a good rival or a firm competition. Try harder next time. Ah, I can't stand it. Especially, this is especially after, uh what was it? The Friendship Games. Everyone's a winner. Which is another way of saying no one is. Well, I, I think for the friendship game is everyone wins because you all live through that turmoil. Yay. <laughs> and I think it's a tie, by the way. So, yeah, it's a tie. You all, well, technically there's no real winner, except the winner is you because you live. So, yay, that's good. Uh, but with this one, uh, I'm not 100% sure if they did mention the proper winner. I think... Um, Applejack says that they all deserve to win, but I'm still holding my decision till, till later. I'll, I'm going to sleep on it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid the way I interpret it is she flat out said, they all win. I vote for them all. They all. So now all of them get to take up uh, Carousel Boutique, leaving Rarity no room for her own designs. She literally says nothing. Applejack uh, gets the pressure thrown on her to make the tie-breaking vote. She ums and ahs, and then it cuts to the scene with Rarity showing Applejack where all three different contestants' clothes will be shown in her shop. Oh. So there, there is no definite Applejack picked this one or said they all win. It's just implied. On a side note, uh, the movie Rubber is actually French. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so, yeah, like... Um... With that, like, we go for what Silver said. They all win. Oh, yay. Yeah. And with that, Applejack spots a new dress that is on display. And, yeah, she goes, ums and uhs. Like, how do you It's, um, this one of your new designs, Rarity. It's, um, uh, the form is reminiscent of, um, I mean, it conjures up images of, um, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> uh, wow, words. Uh, and Rarity reveals that, nah, this is just trash. I just put it there. I know the swamp. <laughs> yeah. It has a very swampy color scheme and looks like it's made out of, like, just parts of bushes and ferns. <laughs> uh, yes. But still, uh, uh, Rarity reveals that, nah, this is just trash and I, I just don't know what I was doing. I was drunk. So, yay. If that episode ends, yay. Finally, oh, thank goodness. Three. Uh, well, let's hit to our final thoughts. And Twy, what do you think, man? Generally, I dislike this episode. It's another exercise in dumbing a character down and making everyone passive in order to make the plot work, which I just see as, as bad writing. Hmm. And it generally makes a character who should be normally very likable just irredeemably annoying. It did have its moments, though. Uh, I did like how they uh, recognize in at the start of the episode that it was probably a bad idea for Applejack to be a judge until they throw logic out the window to make the plot happen. And the ending, I guess, she redeems herself a little bit, but I still think uh, throughout the Applejack needed a bit more punishment, so to speak, for her actions. I mean, saying sorry and helping get get the show to actually happen is a great great thing. But as you said, she literally ripped uh, a half apart. Basically, it's she she didn't get uh, her Muppet 
Rarity should destroy the farm in retaliation. <laughs> oh no. Uh, oh no. But Silver, what about you? What do you think? Blah. Uh, this one, this might have been the low point of the season for me thus far. And in some ways, I hope it stays that way because that means every other episode will be more enjoyable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the moment Applejack started tearing apart people's creations, like you've gone too far. It would have been one thing if Applejack was just so bamboozled by this subculture she doesn't experience a lot. But instead, it right away, it goes to her being way more over the top than they. And so, so even some of the comedy is lost. It would have been fun if they had uh, moments where Applejack was trying to make sense of what they were talking about or what they were doing. But it just, uh, or maybe the uh, the competition was so spirited she couldn't understand why they were getting so uh, ornery. But as it is, Applejack just comes in like a brute, starts to cl- dictating life to everyone, and is just a truly unpleasant person. And I love Applejack. She's my second favorite character, so I don't enjoy seeing her depicted this way. And, well, as for me, uh, well, Applejack's one of those characters where, if done right, she's very enjoyable and memorable. But in this one... <sighs> How do I put this? I have two views on this one where I can't really blame Applejack for what's happening to her here because, well, she's been thrust into a world where she's not used to it. She even mentioned it at the very beginning of the episode where I think you're making a huge mistake here, Rarity. I'm not the best choice. And Rarity says, no, darling, I think you're fine. Like, trust yourself. I trust you. And well, with that, she kind of took it overboard. And where the part where I don't really like is where Rarity just goes overboard with her opinions and thinking in absolutes. Only Sif thinks in absolutes. Which is itself an absolute. (laughs) Yes. Dang it, Lucas. But still, in the end, Applejack learns her lesson the hard way and kind of try to redeem herself. But honestly, I, I, I don't know how to work this properly. I, I can't blame Applejack for this one. But at the same time, too, she's at fault. I'm at a paradox here where I enjoy this episode, yet I hate it. It's hard. It's enjoyable, by the way. Um, I do like it. But ooh, looking at Applejack being such a jerk is kind of hurtful. But at the same time, too, can you really blame her? She's out of her element. Well, there is such a thing as brutal honesty. Yeah, true. Or bluntness. Oh, true. Although, Norman, I I have to say, if you have a paradox, uh, that's a pretty foul situation. (laughs) 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 Yeah. (laughs) Oh, paradox. Don't even get me started. Oh, yeah. One called Daffy and the other called Donald. (laughs) <clears throat> oh wow! You bring duck tails. Woo! Oh wow! But anywho, uh, I enjoyed this episode, and well, uh, the paradox here with hating and loving it is kind of making me making my heart go right round, baby, right round. Uh, but anywho, uh, next week we won't be reviewing anything because I'll be posting up the interview I did with Michelle Kreber at CiponyCon. So, yay. Um, And, well, next week's review would be something related to something uh, that hasn't been decided yet because Silver Hill will be on vacation, right? Yes, I shall be off and away, so I will be wishing you all well, but I shall be noticeably absent, which I'm sure will reduce the headache for Norman, just slightly. Yes, slightly, but you know what? The MBS show has gone up and down. Still, this is nothing new. We've been here before. It's going to be interesting and we'll try and tackle something with something. I'm sure we'll have Seppi on talking about something. It'll be interesting. (laughs) Something, 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 dark side, Skywalker, something, something. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but anywho, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Uh, with every support, you'll get full access to deleted contents and also exclusive contents that are posted on the show. And also you get early access to the review and discussion podcasts. And well, you also get a thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurka Cat, 
Twilight Genesis, Ninja Katoria, Starstream, myself, Lag, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for all the awesome support. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Zissir Vakril. I'm Twilight Genesis. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of MBS Show. See ya. Adios. Cheers. So, to be brutally honest, guys, like, this episode here was fun, but too honest for me. <laughs> you cannot take the honesty, it's over 9,000. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. Try me, baby. Woo!